Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is kind of a piggyback, a continuation of a recent lecture that I did. So we're gonna focus a bit on bottoming tails expectations and going a little bit deeper into your trades, right? So we have textbook perfect patterns that start with a daily chart, right? But there are other times after we move from the daily to the lower time frame, right? Sometimes people are missing good setups because on the lower time frame it wasn't absolutely perfect. But given the daily buy setup or the daily breakout or the daily gap, that trade on the two minute or five minute or 15 minute may have been acceptable. So we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna use real trades taken over the past week. Some of those are from Unmall, some of those are from me. You're gonna see Unmall's P&L uh, as well. So again, this is a higher level lecture. If you look at the recent lecture I did, this lecture will piggyback with that and it's kind of, if you haven't, then you should go back and watch that one because it'll be very important for better understanding this particular lecture. But we're gonna dig deep into the technicals, okay? Okay, and we're going to combine those time frames of the daily and the 60 down to the two minute, three minute, five minute, et cetera, and so forth. Again, it's a very powerful lecture, um, so I would watch it all the way through. If you like these videos, please click that like button, smash hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is using bottoming tails to pick the turn. This is a continuation of last week's lecture, right? Last week we talked about wide range bars, we talked about range expansion bars, we talked about bottoming tails and topping tails and locations and things of that nature. Uh, I thought it was a pretty in-depth technical lesson, um, so I thought it would be a good idea to reinforce some of those concepts with actual trades that were taken during this past week, right? Um, because there's no better way to do that. It's one thing to learn concepts in a book that's great. Even though those concepts are based off of real charts, it's always nice when those real charts just happened. Um, so we're gonna take a look at some of those. Um, we're gonna see a couple slides that are the same as last week, um, but mainly we're gonna focus on about five trades that were taken over the past week uh, from Unmall and myself um, and uh, I think there's a lot to be learned from those. Um, so I think we'll do that. But before we do that, we must first talk about when will the insanity stop? But this week, threw a little curveball. This week, because it's the beginning of the year, I wanted to start you guys off the new year with some positivity. It's a little Tony Robbins segment, I suppose, uh, on when will the insanity stop, okay? So this week, we're gonna talk about people that are doing well, all right? Less of the negativity. We'll just take a kind of a, a U-turn, so to speak, and we're gonna talk about people that are doing well. Um, so Unmall, this was sent to Unmall, all right? You asked for a screenshot of a P&L of the swing and uh, swing portfolio trading with you guys. I'm just going to get down to the pink area here. Notice the yearly profit and loss. It's over $22,000. That's huge for my family. It will help send my oldest through college. I can't thank you enough. Now, again, money is different to everybody. Somebody out there, $1,000 is all the money in the world. Uh, to another person, a million dollars is not a big deal. To this person, $22,000 is a lot. And this is from the swing trading newsletter, portfolio in swing trading. So this is not intraday trading. This is swing trading, holding stocks for a week, a month, two months, um, and basically following Unmall's suggestions um, for those trades. So I think that's pretty impressive, earning $22,000 uh, in 2021 from the swing um, trading newsletter and the portfolio trading newsletter. Um, so congrats to you. And um, I didn't ask this person if I could put it up. That's why I blanked out their name there. So good job to you. Uh, and then I'm going to, I've done this before um, in professional trading strategies, but I just, I was kind of going through these looking for something and I found one from, from 2019 and I thought it would be, I thought it would be good to bring up. Okay. This is December of 19. Okay. Uh, Andrew Brown, hey, I started with $12,000. I'm up 15. 
So that's like 130%, right? I'm up 15,000 after mentorship, splitting three accounts at 3K. Why did I bring this up? Because this is somebody that started the hard way, right? Didn't have the 25,000 necessary to get over that threshold. So they had to split up several accounts to be able to trade, give themselves nine bullets a week, something like that. Again, I'm slow to start getting educated, um, but thank you guys, listen and learn, right? Now you're like, okay, that's nice, Jared, wonderful, who cares? Well, the good part is this. And for those of you that have taken professional trading strategies, you know that the P&L, his actual P&L is in the book. Um, I just wanna sincerely thank you both. During the virus, I saw my business um, take a 40% hit in 2020. Thanks to live traders, I was able to generate and generate an extra forty thousand dollars, bring my account to a little over seventy. So this is the end of 2020, okay? Just over a year ago. Looking forward to 2021, I expect eighty to hundred grand this year. So we go back to this, okay? Killing it in 2019 after mentorship, right? Hundred and some percent. Then we go to 2020, killing it again. All right. 30 some thousand dollars, $40,000, whatever it was, okay? And then we go here, which is 2021, okay? And this is early 2021. I've moved my risk up to $300 and my goal is 12,000 a month. I've been averaging six to 8,000 a month, all right? And I don't know if you guys know Andrew, he's in the chat room, I don't know if he's here right now, um, but he has now, in 2022, raised his risk to $500 a trade. Okay, and I know in week one, he told the chat room last week, which was the first week of the year, then he made $4,000 his first week of the year, not the first month, the first week of the year. So this is 2019, this is 2020, this is 2021, and now we're going into 2022, okay? And the reason I'm bringing this up is one, to show the consistency, but two, more importantly, to show where they came from. Right? This isn't a person who came in with hundreds of thousands of dollars and you know ideas of you know grandiose ideas of becoming rich quick. Um, he's a very kind of slow, conservative, you know, step by step approach. Uh, and I just thought it's we talk so much about all the bad things that traders do. Let's talk about some of the good things that traders do when they do it right, when they do it properly. Let's talk about that stuff. Okay, because the negativity seems to be uh, very, uh, you know, weakly very common, I suppose. And the reason I do the when will the insanity stop so you guys know is so that you guys won't, right? So that you guys won't do it. Um, and then on top of that, because all the advertisements you see are all get rich quick, get rich quick. Hey, I turned 500 into 50 million, right? Trading penny stocks, nonetheless, you can do. That's ridiculous. So I want to show you somebody who did it properly. Right, and now he's gonna go from 30 or $40,000 a year to, I would be shocked, shocked, if Andrew didn't make less than 130 to 150 grand this year, in three years. And then next year, probably move to $1,000 risk and he'll probably double that. He'll probably make 250 next year. That's pretty unbelievable, right? It's pretty impressive. So, let's dig in. Like I said, we're gonna piggyback off of last week's lecture Start with the higher time frame, frame and the tail will guide you. Expectations matter too. So what do we have here? We have three concepts, right? We have higher time frame concept, which we started with last week. The tail will guide you, which we touched upon last week. Uh, and then the expectation part, which we didn't really talk that much about last week. And I wanna spend a minute just on the expectation part. You guys realize that a huge percentage or a big portion of trading is what? It's expectation, yes? Why? Because you might look at something and I might go, you know, it's a decent pattern, but there's not much room. So I wouldn't take that. But that person might say, you know, Jared, it is a good pattern and you're right, there's not much room, but I'm only looking for one R. So for that person, that trade might be acceptable. See where I'm going with this? To another person who might be doing three R all or nothing, or maybe end of the day hold and it only has one R, it's not worth the effort because you're not likely gonna get through all that support or all that resistance. So make sure you understand the expectation when you get into a trade, right? Don't just jump in and go, oh, I like the pattern. Know where the potential for that trade to go is. Sure, sometimes they exceed our expectations, but you can't go into every trade expecting it to exceed your expectation, right? You just can't do it, all right? So don't, all right? So 
that's kind of going to be the theme today. And again, these are the two to three slides that you saw last week. So I am not going to spend much time on them. All right. You saw these last week. I'm not going to spend much time on them. Okay. It's just a quick refresher. All right. Where things happen matters. So location and size of the tail matters. Okay. Was it a topping tail? Great. But was it a topping tail after five green bars or was it a topping tail after five red bars? It's a completely different mindset. It's a completely different mindset. Okay. So there's a lot of different variations of these bars. Okay. But the location and the size, how it got there, where it is also matter very much. Like I said, I'm not going to spend much time on this. It's just a refresher to say, hey, go back and look at last week's lecture uh, when you can. Um, and Remember the things we talked about more specifically, where they happen, how they happen, how they form, okay? Then we also spoke about this last week. This in trading is one of the most important slides you'll ever see in trading, okay? Understanding what a bar is and what it looks like and how it, how it formed is very, very important. But we talked again last week about it's not just how it formed, but where it formed, okay? So we talked about, remember we talked about this topping tail actually being a, a red bar? Right? It was a wide range green bar. And then you can imagine this turning into a red bar. So again, I'll do it real briefly for you guys before I get into the other stuff. I want you to think of this bar kind of like this, right? Because that's really kind of what happened, right? It was basically like this. Think of it like this. The bar looked like this, okay? It looked like this. And then started looking like this. And then started looking like this. And then started looking like this. And then it started looking like this, and then it went to this. How do you feel now? I mean, it went from pure green all the way up here to basically that. Well, I don't feel so good about that anymore, okay? And then the representation of it is that, okay? It's just topping tail. That's how I want you to view these tails. And when you look at a doji, you think red on the bottom, sorry, red on the top, green on the bottom. Well, there's that kind of in between 50-50. So keep that in mind again. I don't, I'm not going to get into this heavy today because we got into it heavy last week. So I won't do it again. And then the other slide that's going to probably become most appropriate today is this. All right. Of the charts we're going to talk about, this slide is probably going to be most, most influential today. Because we talked about level and depth of retracement into the prior bar and that level or depth increases or decreases the potency of the trade, right? So you have this start on the right hand side, you have this big green bar right here. Well, then the stock gaps down and takes out 70% of that. Well, that's very, very bearish. And not only did it take out 70% on the gap, it kept on going down. So this is a very, very powerful sign from the bears. Okay, over here, the stock was green, it gapped up, which is very bullish. Gapping down is very bearish. Okay, this is very bullish. This is very bearish. So it automatically starts from a bullish point of view. And then it goes red. And yes, that is bearish. But this is much more bearish. And these are the things you really have to look at when you're reading the chart. Okay, and then we talked about this location level and depth of penetration matters. And we also talked about time frame. When that pattern happens over a longer period of time, it's a much more potent pattern, right? It means a lot more, okay? So I want you to kind of keep this slide in your mind as we go through today because the next five or six slides, uh, and like I said, this lecture might be a little bit shorter than normal because I'm not feeling so hot today, um, are trades that we're taking. And there's a couple of things we're going to talk about in there. It's not just going to be bottoming tails. It's not just going to be about engulfing bars, okay? so. What was the catalyst for me to want to put this together? Well, one, we talked about some of these concepts last week. And then I saw, you know what? Unwall took some very good trades yesterday and some very interesting ones. And then that happened. $7,777.04 yesterday. Okay, now granted, some of these were options, right? There's a put on DWAC, there's a Lucid call, even though he did trade the stock on both DWAC and Lucid, right? Um, but seven grand is a pretty good day right that's not bad especially when you're 29 and you're not married and don't have kids that's a really good day a lot of people out there won't make this in a month okay but this was the end result of yesterday but why did he take these trades right why okay 
Let's take a look at them. And there's, there's, there's a method to my madness today because we like, and it's, it's never a bad thing, but we like to take textbook plays, right? It's what we like to do. And we should try to do that as frequently as possible. And as you guys know, Unwell has a slightly different approach to trading, which is why he has the strategy course, right? You take some of those core PTS concepts and then you add a couple extra high level advanced um, concepts to those already powerful concepts. So if we start with TSM, you call this pretty early in the day, high of the day by low of the day. And you'll note, this wasn't an unbelievably amazing gap. Yes, it was a gap, but it wasn't a great gap. We happened to had trade TSM the previous day, so it was on a carryover list. But what we see is a stock that ripped above resistance, right? 125 is pivot resistance, another pivot resistance here, and here's another pivot area. Topping tail moved a little higher, but pulled back. And this stock, for all intents and purposes, really struggled to get above 125 for six months. I mean, seriously, we're talking June, July, August, September, October, November, December, we're into January six months. So when it finally did break that area with a wide range, what do we call it? Range expansion bar, range expansion bar, last week's lecture, okay, moves up, pulls back. And where does it pull back to? If we go back a month, where did I say is the single safest area on the chart? Does anybody remember? This is a lecture going back a couple few months. Safest area on the chart to buy a stock. Does anybody remember? That's it. The first pullback after a breakout. The first pullback after a breakout. We talked about this when we talked about transitions. So the safest area on a chart to buy is when a stock breaks out, in this case above resistance, and then pulls back to support. And that's exactly what TSM did. So we had a range expansion bar here. Over here, we had a bottoming tail bar at support and a small gap up not a big one small gap up it initially pulled back off the open and boom so now what are we doing we're using the higher time frame last week's lecture we're using the higher time frame as our rocket fuel right we're using that as our time frame of bias because you always should whether it's a 60 minute or a daily you should use those two time frames as your time frame of bias but you want a good daily chart and the point also I'm making is it doesn't have to be a gap. It could just be a really nice daily chart, okay? So this was on our list early. It was on my list. It was on Unmall's list. We both had TSM on our list. I just missed this at 126, right? I said, you guys, I had internet issues yesterday, right? And we tried to get this and the internet went down and you guys remember the whole debacle. It was, I was very upset, okay? Anyway, missed it at 26 because the entry is kind of right there on the buy setup, right? Using the daily chart as your guide. So it moves up and Unmall took a little bit of a late, but somewhat of an aggressive entry. And the reason I put this three minute here, I'm gonna blow this up for a second, just so you guys can see it. All right, I'm gonna blow this up for a second, okay? All right, ignore, ignore the arrows. This was a turnaround bar on the three minute chart, right? This was a turnaround bar on the three minute chart. So Unmall got in up here, all right, which was, I don't know, 126.70 or something. And he used a very wide stop. Why? Because this is a low time frame early in the day. We're only six, seven, eight minutes into the day. You know, you don't want to just take the tightest stop possible. We did a lecture on that also. Half the shares, double the stop, especially early in the morning, because you're going to get whipped out. And that happens frequently. So took basically a three minute turnaround bar inside of a daily buy setup. Okay, pull this back down. Inside of a daily buy setup. And this stock ultimately went to 129 plus plus. Okay, and made good money. But what I want you guys to look at is how we just tied everything we learned last week into one chart or two time frames, one stock. We looked at the daily, we had a range expansion bar breaking out of this resistance point. We pulled back to support, got a bottoming tail doji bar. Okay, this was what? Once a red bar that now the bottoming tail basically is a green bar when you think about it. And this is the safest area on a chart, okay? Small gap up, room back to 135. Find a way in, find an entry. 
missed the ideal entry because of some tech issues, got in this entry. Okay? This was a very good trade. All right? It was a really, really good trade. And just think of all the concepts it combines of things you've learned in these lectures. Okay? And it paid. It paid out handsomely. Now, this one, there's a lot going on here. Just as this chart says, this is on Lucid, all right? And there's a lot going on here. So let's let's break this down. Let's dissect this. We have a daily chart, okay? What's this, by the way? Range expansion bar, okay, right there. Over here from late October, early November. You're breaking out of a range, range expansion bar. And what did it do? Expanded the range of this stock from 30 to 55, 57 bucks. Pulls back, bounces, pulls back, bounces, and then this is the key here. Okay, it's very important. I, I really need you guys to, to understand how important this concept is. So you have a stock that's clearly in an uptrend. It pulls back to the moving average. Okay, so you're holding the moving average. It's chopping around. Okay, and you're thinking to yourself, well, it does continue to leave bottoming tails. However, when this thing breaks this low at $36, you have to think, yeah, there's a little support left, but you're in trouble, right? This was a red bar that broke below a lengthy consolidation. So during this consolidation, what is happening? Buyers and sellers are fighting to a stalemate most of the time. Neither side is really winning this battle. You could argue maybe slightly the buyers are winning because of the bottoming tails, but then the sellers put in a topping tail here and a topping tail here. And then there's this green bar that looks like it's going to push the stock higher, and then two red bars come in. So this is truly you know, a 15-round fight, so to speak. They're going back and forth, back and forth, and then boom. You're like, okay, sellers won. Sellers won. They push this stock below the support area at $36. Finally, someone has you know, punched a hole in the ship, okay? And this stock's gonna go lower. What happens? Massive bottoming tail, wide range bar, takes out this pivot and this pivot. This is very powerful. This bar was supposed to go lower. Everything on the technical chart said we are going lower until we didn't. We left a bottoming tail. And then to consolidate the bottoming tail, so to speak, the next day was a wide range green day. To reconfirm the strength of the buyers, the next day was green. It wasn't enough just to have a bottoming tail. The next day they took out the prior pivots. This stock, it's going one direction, up, up. Resting day right here. So we have a bit of a three bar play on the daily with room to go back to 57. So that's good. We've broken down the daily chart. And in a perfect world, We'd like to get in this right around 43.20, right? Right at the kind of the entry of the three bar play. And this is where there's a lot going on here. What do we do? This is a tough question. This is not, I'm, not, I'm asking as in, I'm going to tell you, but I'm still not 100% sure. I would love to wait for 43.20. In fact, we posted it in the chat room yesterday. Wait for 43.20. But. If you waited for 43.20, you got there up one, two, three, four, five bars on the three minute chart. <sighs> now, where are you going to put your stop loss? Down here at 41.50. So all of a sudden you have a $2 stop loss? <sighs> it's tough. So what Unwall chose to do is get in on a pullback, right? Get in on this pullback right here. And you look at it and you're like, that ended up being a very good area. Now, why? because we had a green bar launch this thing off the open with a bottoming tail, and then two red bars came in. A little bit concerning because it's 100% retracement, but they also left another bottoming tail with a green doji bar, and with that bottoming tail was left in the same spot the last one was left, which means buyers stepped up here in a big way. We have to think buyers are probably going to step up here in a big way as well. So while this entry was a bit more aggressive, it ended up being a stellar entry because this stock broke $45, was up over three bucks on an 80 cent stop loss, something like that, four to one, okay? So this is a challenge because we know the daily, we love the daily, we know where we ideally would like to get into the daily, but Unmall nibbled some of this, gave it a little extra wide of a stop. So then that's the question, how aggressive do you want to be sometimes? Do you want to get in before it breaks support? Well, that's okay, but how much before it breaks support? 
Well, there's probably other factors, market environment as well being one of them. So this one was one of those where I look at this as a high level trade, right? This is an advanced level type trade because yes, it was a buy setup, but we weren't over the area, overhead supply area that we really wanted to be above. Okay. Now you're going to be at about one R by the time you got to the prior pivot high. So this would be another one where perhaps your management would matter. Remember we talked about expectation. Your management might matter here because you might get up to 43.20 and it's possible. Let's be fair here. It's possible you get slapped. It's possible you get to 43.20 and the market just <laughs> slaps you back. Okay. Well, if that's the case, you might want some protection. You might want to go to break even at that point right? Because you know that that's an area that might be a challenge to overcome. In this particular case, it wasn't. It just ripped right through it like a hot knife through butter, pulled back and then ripped again. But again, not a trade I'd like to see a beginner taking. I'd love to see you analyze the daily the way we broke it down, but I don't want to necessarily see you taking that exact entry, okay? I love the retest. I love the bottoming tail. I love the general strength of the stock, but this is again a more advanced entry. BYND starts with the daily chart. It always does. Why am I bringing some of these up today? Because some of these charts are charts you might overlook. You might just look and go, all right, it's not a level two gap. I'm done. You know what? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to just trade level one and level two gaps and don't look at other you know daily patterns, that's fine. But take your trading to a next level and still have give yourself a little bit more opportunity take a look at some of these so what do we have we have a clear downtrend on bynd okay besides i mean who really likes fake meat honestly right chop 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 lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high equal low consolidation okay consolidation all right now what do we have tug of war in a downtrend this is key it's important tug of war in a downtrend so bigger picture sellers are winning. Shorter term, like December, the month of December, what do we have? Overlap, 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 tug of war. Buyers are not able to push the stock higher. Sellers are not able to push it lower. Then hole in the ship, red bar here and another red bar here. And, and it closes in that area. So what are you immediately thinking when you see that red bar? You're immediately thinking, we're going lower. Of course we're going lower. There's a hole in the ship. We're going lower. Next day, this wide range green bar comes in. It takes out the wide range red bar. Just have a gander at that volume. On this chart in the last four or five months, that's the third highest, second or third, no, it's second highest, second highest amount of volume this stock has put in in the last four or five months. You think that uh, mom and pop burger shop owners are doing that to BYND? No pun intended with their fake meat. No, that's big money doing that. Big money is the one putting 14 million shares into BYND, engulfing this red bar and penetrating 80% into the top end of this pivot. Big money, okay? Topping tail, bottoming tail, now this is the day we're talking about. So you have to look at this. Is that wide range green bar potent? Yes, super potent. You just took out, you just plugged the hole in the ship, but you didn't fill it with putty. Like you patched it up, you welded that hole. We're done, we're not going lower. The ship is fine now. Now does this mean it's gonna go back to 120? No, but we're intraday trading it. We're not core trading it, we're intraday trading it. So you see the volume spike, you see the turnaround bar. This is a trend changing turnaround bar, right? We have trend confirming, trend changing. This is a trend changing turnaround bar. And also what's important too, look at this volume the previous day. It's not like that red bar didn't have volume. A lot of people piled in to short this stock. What do those people have to do to get out of it? Cover their position. This caused a lot of people to cover their position. So now what do we have? A whole bunch of people cover their position. A whole bunch of institutions bought it. And we have what? A situation where there are fewer sellers to drag the stock down because a lot of them got out on these two bars. So now the stock has a much higher likelihood of going up.
So we move to the 10 minute stock opens. Okay, this is the previous day with the bottoming tail. Okay, this is that red bar bottoming tail. Okay, so early in the day went from 69 to 64 and bounced back up. That's the bottoming tail. It left a pivot. Early in the day, bottoming tail bounces at the pivot. Next bar test again, big ass bottoming tail at the pivot. So bottoming tail buyers, bottoming tail buyers, bottoming tail buyers. One wall gets in just below sixty-seven dollars, sixty-six eighty in this case. Puts his stop down here, down here. Note at least fifty cents below this pivot. Why? Just in case the stock wiggles. In case the stock wiggles, he's giving it wiggle room because this is that type of trade. This isn't a hit and run three bar play breakout. This is a stock that's still dealing with issues of support and resistance. So he's gonna say, you know what? I'm giving it all the room, why? If it gives us the opportunity, we'll just add back. It's a great approach. So bottoming tail on the retest, huge volume on the daily, engulfing bar, trend changing turnaround bar, blips below support, comes right back up. Stock goes higher. Went up to 70 plus. Was this a monster home run? No. But it was a good trade. Why? It wasn't a monster home run because it gave it a dollar eighty for protective purposes, which is fine because most of the time you will get an opportunity to add back. Sometimes you won't. We didn't get the opportunity to add back in a in a big way. You maybe you could have added back at 67.50. Turned out to be a good trade. DWAC, D W A C, DWAC. However you want to say it. This stock, note, there's a theme here, right? There's a theme here over the last three charts, four charts we've looked at. The dailies are in tug of wars. Tug of wars, tug of wars, tug of wars, tug of wars. Back and forth, fighting, 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 back and forth, right? Nobody's winning. Well, this green bar took out that pivot, pulled back, and just chopped around. This pink line represents support. This represents an area that we really shouldn't be breaking under. Well, this bottoming tail broke under the support. So remember, this was a red bar at one point in time. Okay? This was a red bar at one point in time. What happened? Buyers step up. By the way, do you see the volume here? Do you see the volume? Second highest volume bar in the last three, four months. This is no joke. This is not, again, your mom and pop burger shop owners buying Dwack up. Okay, 12 million shares, 11 million shares, whatever it is. That bottoming tail represents big time institutional buying as well as breaking above the resistance area, consolidates the next couple days, and now you're getting in right here at this $64 area, something like that over here. But let's take a look at it on the 60. This is the pink line that you see on the daily. This is that bottoming tail. Look at the bottoming tail. Went down to $45. Guys, that's it. The stock's broken at that point. What should have happened is it continued lower or bounces and there's a sell setup and it goes lower. Neither one of those things happened. The bottoming tail here represents buyers stepping up and the sell setup which is not a good one because you're shorting into a huge ass bottoming tail. But neither one of those was able to hold this stock down, right? The fact that this was a wide range red bar couldn't hold the stock down. The fact that there's a sell setup couldn't hold the stock down. What happened? Boom. They got the people they wanted in, HFTs, whatever you want to call it, the big boys, they flipped their finger to you on this one. They said, ha, oh, gotcha. And then they ripped this bad boy higher. That's a serious move on volume, pulls back, chops around, goes higher. Okay, so a battle was fought and it was clearly won by the buyers. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, hold on. So now what do you get? Using the 60 and using the daily, I almost said, all right, I need this thing to show me something. It's too, it's not strong enough yet for me to come in and buy it right down here. So what does it do? It goes higher, breaks the prior pivot, proves there's some strength, wide range bars on volume. Okay. He gets in in a fairly aggressive trade, but once again, he knows he's smart when he takes a somewhat aggressive entry. Cause again, it's based off of the daily and the 60. That's where the entry is really based off of. 
but we need to drill down sometimes to get a, a more a finer entry so to speak right uses the low of the day and yes wide stop four dollar stop loss a little less so you go four dollar stop loss oh my gosh gets in and note where you got in it's up one two three four bars well, you know if you get in up after four bars, you're probably going to have a bit of a pullback. On Mall News knows this. So four bars up, stop low of the day. He knows it's got to wiggle a little. We're getting in a little bit late. Not late, but a little bit of an extended move. Not a ton, just a little. Goes a little higher, pulls back, chops around, pulls back. A battle is being fought in here. You know who's going to eventually win at this time? The buyers. Okay? Because they already took out most of the sellers over here. You could have added over here and raised your stop down to like, I don't know, $57. So you possible add pretty much where you got in, right? Possible add pretty much in the same spot, 58, 50 ish. And you could have raised your stop to 57 if you so choose. That's up to you. And it rips, pulls back and rips. Went to, I don't know, 66 bucks or something like that yesterday. So it ended up being a good trade, but not a home run because they didn't add. But the possibility to add was there. And all of this comes down to, let's just say, intraday entries that many of you would, n would not have taken because you didn't see the bigger picture on the 60 and the daily chart, okay? And all of that turned into $7,777, right? Now, granted, I am throwing in some lucid calls and dwack puts, and there was a and OVRF trade in there as well, but call it six grand. Pretty good day on four trades, right? And we've seen days where he's made eighteen or twenty thousand dollars. So, what I'm getting at, guys, is we have great PTS strategies. Whoops, that's a wrong slide. Great PTS strategies, okay? But if you haven't looked into Unmall Strategy Course, you want to do so. Because what he's doing is he's combining both of those texts together. He's taking the core concepts of professional trading strategies and he's putting his own little twist on some of them, which he's turned into the strategy course, which complements PTS. So you take PTS and then you go into the strategy course. And then you'll understand those much, 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 much better. But he still, as we all do, start with a higher time frame bias. And it doesn't have to be a gap, right? It says, but don't just trade gaps. Trending daily charts are just as powerful. Don't just trade gaps. Open your... Now, I'm not saying you can't. Some people just trade gaps and that's okay. It's the reason we have a carryover list, right? There's a reason you, you can look at runners, percentage gainers list, those types of things as well, all right? So let the chart guide you. Use the higher time frame. Make sure you're not just looking at gaps. Look at daily charts as well. Okay, and drill down. You start with that forest approach. Take a look at the whole forest. Okay, and then drill down to the trees. Don't do the opposite. Most of you are looking at the tree and you're hoping the forest isn't on fire. No, look at the forest first to see that it's not on fire, then drill down to the tree. Unmall is doing a great job with that. And the proof is in the pudding. One more time, the proof is in the pudding, right? You don't make seven or eight grand by being lucky does this all the time all right he can you can and guess what the heck with unmull if andrew can do it and start with 12 grand and turn his 12 grand into well over 100 in two or three years you can too swing trade newsletter twenty two thousand dollars following somebody else's advice now in 2022 what will this be maybe it'll be fifty thousand dollars maybe it'll be a hundred right so the thing is you have to put the time in Right? You have to put the time and the effort in. And to do that, you're going to need an education. You're going to need market experience as well. All right? And a trading plan. So, I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. I hope that you guys enjoyed that lecture. I hope that you guys will use some of those concepts and apply them to your own trading to help you make more profits. All right? So, Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.